Hello and welcome to a Graham Ezzy coaching video. I am Graham Ezzy and I'm a professional windsurfer. And because there are no World Cups this year, I've put my time and energy into coaching. Most of the coaching takes place in a private Facebook group called Graham Ezzy's Windsurf Coaching Community. Uh, you can find the URL here, facebook.com slash groups slash Ezzy Coaching. And you can post your questions, photos, videos, and I'll discuss them and comment on them. And every Sunday I do a live stream where I offer live coaching for everything that was posted during the week, as well as whatever questions come up in the chat during the live stream. So here's an example of some of the questions and here are some of the posts. Um, we get into a lot of good discussion. I'm really enjoying it. So feel free to join the group. Everyone is welcome. This video is part of a larger series of uh, more direct coaching videos where I'll be focusing on a few specifics. And this format gives me uh, more time to do an in-depth analysis, uh, which is something that's been requested. Uh, huge shout out to the coaching team, everyone that has supported the live coaching and the recorded coaching like this. Um, so that's everyone here. If you want to join this list of legends and support this content, um, the PayPal link is right here in the group and you can request uh, topics and I'm more than happy to coach whatever you guys want. So my focus is on wave riding, uh, but I'm open to all questions. All right, so let's get into it for today. So there are many good sailors who really focus on what technique and what equipment they need to change in order to improve their sailing. But in doing so, they're forgetting the fundamentals or they think that they need to focus on working hard rather than focus on mastering fundamental wave riding technique. And I think that's a big mistake. So I think by going back to the fundamentals, you can improve your wave sailing dramatically. That means you can improve your wave sailing without learning any new technique, without changing your equipment. And so what do I mean by fundamentals? So that comes down to wave selection, placement, and timing. These three things are so important. With all the technique in the world, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, I've got a video that proves this point. With all the technique in the world, if you don't have wave selection, placement, and timing, you will fail at riding a wave. Without much technique, but if you have perfect wave selection, perfect placement, and perfect timing, you can actually ride waves very well. Wave riding at its core is about harnessing the energy of the waves and turning it into board speed. The technique is a way to do that, but if you focus too much on the technique, you lose the core connection with the ocean. And by focusing on wave selection, placement, and timing, you get that connection, put yourself in the right place at the right time, and things just start to work. Wave riding is not supposed to be hard. If you're doing it right, it's not hard work while you're doing it. So let's get into some footage. I've got a great example that I wanna show everyone. So this is a video from Hokipa, filmed by Paul Rice, who longtime watchers of the live stream will know used to be my co-host. Uh, so he's a good friend of mine and I started coaching him just for fun and then he suggested I do uh, some live coaching, bringing it out to the world and I've really enjoyed that process. So let's get into this clip. So I'll talk you through it and then we're gonna do a deeper analysis. The first wave, we've got Kevin Pritchard. Smallish wave, nice bottom turn, a little bit late hit, but he gets good projection carries good speed. Next wave is Marsilio Brown. A little bit bigger waves come through, ooh, gets the boom to the face, sail to the face. 
Third wave, Ricardo Campello, also multiple world champion. And there's just not quite anything there. Fourth wave is Adam from Poland, uh, one of the up and coming windsurfers on the youth world tour. And finally, pumping on to the last wave of the set, we have Zedanek from Czech Republic. Coming down the line, gets in a setup turn, gathers speed, stays with the peeling part of the wave, carves a cutback, and carves another cutback. So what I love about this footage is it really shows the importance of these fundamentals, wave selection, placement, and timing. So these first three wave riders, Kevin Pritchard, Marcelio Brown, and Ricardo Campeller, are some of the best windsurfing wave sailors of now and of all time. Kevin Pritchard has eight world titles, two wave world titles. He won the Aloha Classic in 2016. Marcelio Brown is considered by many to be the best wave sailor in the world if you include jumping and both starboard and port tack. Ricardo Campello also has multiple world titles, a contender for the world title every year. But despite all that technique, the technique of all three combined, if we add the wave scores as if this were a competition, they still would not beat Zedanik's final wave. So if we went through into the scoring, so Kevin has the best wave out of the first three, but it's a significantly smaller wave. So he gets a nice bottom turn, gets good off the lip, gets some projection. The, the off the lip is a little bit late, uh, but he gets good projection, carries his speed, comes through. But it's a significantly smaller wave than the rest of the set, and that would affect the score. So this would be maybe about a, a four and a half if uh, it were judged in a competition. Maybe a four. And this wave from Marsilio Brown, he's just too late. And he gets the boom to the face, the sail to the face. I hope he's okay. That would be a zero. Ricardo Campello comes through. Looks like he was eyeing this section, decided to do nothing, wanted to look for a turn at the end of this wave. But by the time he gets there, he decides just to drive out. Um, you can see that he bounces a bit in this, in this area. And this part of the wave is not offering much power. There's not much going on there. Now, so that's another zero. So if we add these three scores, we're looking at about a four to four and a half. And we look at Zenonex final wave, which is about mast high, as we can see here. And he gets in a nice turn. The wave is staying open, unlike the other waves, which are closing out in this set. This wave stays open. It looks cleaner. It looks less choppy. He's staying with the power sources of the wave, getting speed from the wave and doing nice carving turns. He manages to get three turns in there, uh, which would probably score maybe about a, between a five and a five and a half. Um, so again, a better score than the first three waves combined. And I remind you that the first three wave riders are some of the best windsurfing wave riders of all time, which means that they have all the technique in the world. They have the technique. Now, why are they getting such low scores here? It's, it's not because they lost the technique somehow. It's not that they forgot how to bottom turn or how to cut back or how to do a 360 or a goiter. The problem is that their timing is off, their wave selection is off, and their placement is off. This also highlights another side of my point, which is that these fundamental skills are very difficult. Even some of the best wave riders of all time are still working on these fundamental skills. They don't always get it right. 
And I'll tell you a secret in competitions and wave riding competitions where the score comes down to the wave rides, not the jumps. It has to do with wave selection. Wave selection decides heats, decides world titles, period. Because if you're on a better wave, you can do more. There's just more potential. Uh, again, wave riding is not supposed to be hard. It's not difficult. If you're doing it right, it's not difficult. You're dancing with the wave, you're getting the energy from the wave, you're using your board, the rails of your board. Surfboards, windsurf boards are designed to pick up this energy, to carve on the rail. It's not hard work, but you have to be in the right place at the right time and on the right wave which is exactly what Zedanek is doing here. So he may, might not have the technique or skill that Kevin Pritchard, Marcelo Brown, and Ricardo Campello have, but he has a better wave ride because he's on a better wave, he's on the right place on that wave, and at the right time. And we can go through and look at that a little bit more closely. So Zedanek's wave is staying open right? So it's, it's not closing out. If we look at these other waves, so Kevin's, Kevin's wave, he gets a good turn on it. He's a little bit late with the timing, but it's fine. The major issue with Kevin's wave in comparison to the rest of the set is that it's, it's less than half the size. It's about head high instead of mast high. Um, and there's really just this one, this one section here for it. If we look at Brasino's wave, it starts to peel um, but he's just too late. He's too late. And the way this is a function of both placement and timing. So the way that this wave is breaking, you can see it's, it's breaking in this area all at once. And so if he'd started his turn, instead of starting it here, if he'd started it here, then by the time that he got up to the wave, he would be here and he'd be able to do a really nice off the lip. And instead, so it's a function of both placement and timing, he's getting the boom to the face. And if we look at Ricardo, he's got okay timing, but his wave has some issues. So you can see there's a lot of chop in the wave. Right? You can see that from the lip of the wave, if you look at the lip where this mouse is going, see this like uneven line? It means that there's some weird water flowing up the face of the wave. And he's, he's seeing that. And so he's seeing that the wave is choppy, that the wave is breaking in a weird way. Uh, it's, it's taking a little bit too long to break. And instead of breaking top to bottom, like if, if we go back to Brasino's wave, Right, you can see that it, it's breaking from the lip down almost to the bottom of the wave, right? In that sort of motion. And if we go back to uh, the wave with R Ricardo, the lip is, is starting to, to crumble on itself. So it's, it's kind of going like this for a while and then it crumbles on itself. And that signifies a less powerful wave. Uh, there's more uh, water in the face of the wave uh, it's, it's more difficult to do a turn on, uh, there's less speed to get from the wave, and uh, it's not possible to do, I believe, the kind of turn that Ricardo had in his head that he wanted to do. I think he wanted to do kind of more of a, a big aerial maneuver, um, but that's not possible with this kind of lip. And this lip is not really nice for doing any kind of off the lip because you're not getting a lot of projection because the wave isn't throwing forward, it's throwing just right down on top of itself and then crumbling down. And you can see that this uneven line means that it's really unpredictable and difficult to find a place to put your board into. So it looks like he then goes for a bottom turn here, but again, this is choppy. There's not much power in this part of the wave to gather into board speed. And so he aborts mission and jives off the wave. So again, this is an issue where wave selection is the problem. And so if we go back to Zedanex wave, look, it's a clean wave. 
You can see there's less chop in the wave. It's peeling. Um, he's opting for face turns rather than going for the lip. Uh, and the wave is staying open for that. So you can see that this wall is a lot cleaner. There's a lot less chop in this wall. He's able to come up to the power source of the wave, do a cut back, gather more speed from the wave. And you can see that the wave is setting up perfectly in front of him as if the wave is anticipating what Zedinik wants to do. And that is an example of good wave writing. When it looks like the wave is anticipating what the wave rider wants to do, that is an example of good fundamental wave skill on the part of the rider. And so he manages to get in one more turn in this exchange. So how do you work on these fundamental skills? What is that? What does that mean? How do you put this in practice? Right? We're talking about wave selection, placement, and timing. So for, I'm going to go through them one by one. For wave selection, okay? For wave selection, it starts with awareness. If you're aware and have the intention of choosing the best waves, the waves that will offer you the best potential, you will get better. You will hone the skill of choosing the right waves. It starts with the intention and that causes your brain to start paying attention to what is happening with the swell. And so you think you compare how the, the swell looked on the outside compared to how it looked when it was breaking and your brain will start to put the pieces together and you'll start to have an instinct about what the wave is going to do. And some of that comes from the gut, comes from just a feeling, and some of it is more conscious. For example, at Hokipa, we get waves that come from the east, that, that come from the north, that come from the west, um, all in one day sometimes. And the waves that come from the east often don't have much power, but they stay open and they're kind of crumbly and open. The waves that come from the west often have a lot of power, but they close out in just one big dump. And the waves that are coming from the north have a bit of both worlds. And so those are the best waves to ride on these days uh, where they'll stay open, but they still have good power. And so then I'm consciously aware that I don't want to get a wave that's coming from the east and I don't want to get a wave that's coming from the west and I want to find a wave that's coming from the north. And a lot of different spots are like this, even if you're riding with windswell or even especially with windswell, where the windswell can get turned around and there's one direction that works better for the rocks or the reef or the sand on the bottom. Uh, this is true in the Canary Islands. If you're sailing in Pozo or El Cabezo, there are certain directions of waves that just break better. They have more power, they're more clean, they're more open. And those are the waves that you want. And that is a more conscious understanding. But like with the gut understanding, it starts with intention. It starts with awareness. It starts with being aware, paying attention, and seeing what it looks like when the wave goes from the outside and to the inside. And if once you start paying attention, your brain puts together the pieces. If you wanna get a jump start on this process, follow better sailors. Find someone who is one of the best sailors on the water for that day and follow them. See where they're catching waves, see what waves they're going on, maybe get the wave behind them. And then you can even watch them, see where they're setting up on the wave and when they're turning on it, which I'm jumping ahead a bit to placement and timing, but this is a great way to jumpstart your understanding of the fundamentals of a specific spot because every spot is different. So for example, when I go to a new spot, I'll do this. I'll look at the best local guy and I'll see, okay, where is he catching the wave? And then I'll go try that. And I might end up sailing somewhere else. For me, I might find, oh, actually I want to be more upwind. There's a bit more power in the wave there, even if it's not as long, because then 
once you start understanding what the swell is doing, when it actually breaks, you can make decisions about what you want. And sometimes I'll choose a wave that is offering fewer turns, but has more power. You know, I'd rather have two turns on a wave that has a lot of power versus say five turns on a wave that doesn't have much power. But not everyone is gonna make that same choice. If you have the wave knowledge, this, these fundamental skills, you can make that choice. If you don't have the awareness, there's no choice being made and it's just luck of the draw. And oftentimes you're gonna have bad luck. Um, wave selection is incredibly important. And I know that it, we get impatient, we get greedy. It feels so good to ride a wave, right? And so you're out there on the outside and you just wanna catch a wave. You just wanna ride a wave. But you have to be disciplined, you have to be patient and choose the better waves. And that means waiting. But if you have your whole session filmed, and I think this was a revelation for some of the guys on the clinic that I did in Denmark, when we were filming the whole session and we saw that, okay, they might've been catching more waves, but they were doing fewer turns. So if you're catching say 10 waves in an hour, but they're small bad waves compared to catching five waves in an hour, so it's fewer waves and to be more patient, but you're able to get three turns on each of those waves it's a much better experience. You're getting in more sailing. You're getting in more wave riding, right? Um, so it's a, it's a little bit counterintuitive, but having discipline, having patience pays off. Don't just come in on any swell. Don't come in on any wave. Make sure it's a good wave that's gonna offer you potential. Now, you're not always gonna get it right. This video is a perfect Example, we've got three of the best windsurfers, wave sailors of all time, and they're not making the best choices. But by being aware and having the intention, you'll learn and you'll make more good choices. So let me add something here because up to this point, we've been talking about the potential that the waves are offering, right? And so if you're on a better wave, you can do more on the wave. And so many of you have the technique, you have the skill, but you're just on the wrong waves. And so how do you know if this is you? Well, if you have this hit or miss experience where sometimes you have a good wave, maybe one out of 10 waves are really good, but then the nine out of 10 are not, and you're kind of struggling with your ability, well, you have the technique because you can do it the one out of 10 times. So you have the technique, you can do it. And I would bet pretty good money that the difference in those one out of 10 times is that you just happen to be on the right wave at the right place and at the right time. So instead of focusing on technique or gear, it's now time to just bring your focus back to the fundamentals and focus on the wave selection, placement and timing. And by doing that, your technique and ability will also get better. So not only will you be doing better, but then you're, you're practicing more. So if you're getting three turns on a wave or four turns on a wave compared to one or none, you're getting three to four to infinite times more practice on that wave. That's a huge multiplier, right? That's the difference between training for one hour and four hours or training not at all versus actually training, right? So by bringing your focus into the fundamentals, I can't stress how beneficial that will be for your windsurfing. This is the number one thing that wave sailors need to focus on. All right, so that, that covers wave selection. What does placement mean? So placement simply means being on the right place of the wave. So how do you think about that? I like to think about it in terms of power sources. So what is wave riding? Wave riding is taking this chaotic energy of the ocean that 
is expressed as waves and turning that energy into board speed, right? So each wave has a power source and the power source is dynamic. You know, it's not always, um, it's, it's moving. So let's, let's look at one of these waves as an example, right? So in this still picture, the power source is right here, maybe from, you could say it's from here to here, and there's also power being expressed here, and then there's less and less power over here, right? So you want to be where you can pick up the power, and so you want to start where there's power, so you can see where Brazino is dropping in. Again, his placement is a bit off because he's too late to get to that power source, and the, the wave is already broken. Uh, but if you start, so for example, here at this power source, you're dropping in where there's power in the wave and you're going to where there's going to be power in the wave, which is over here, right? So if we keep going, we can see that there is then a power source building here. You're going to be picking up power from the wave as you go into your bottom turn and then coming up to an area where you're going to get more power. So what I want you to do is you want to look for the peaks of the wave, look for the areas on the wave that are going to give you power, these power sources on the wave. And you want to make sure you're starting on a power source, so starting on a peak, and going to a power source. And the power source, um, I mean, it's not a static place over time. It, you know, as, as the wave is breaking, where the power is being generated is also moving. All right? So again, this is, an this is something that Zedenek is doing well. So he's dropping in... Here, he's getting speed from the wave. He comes up to where, again, the wave is building power. So the most power is being generated right here and it drops off this way, but he's still able to pick up power here. Whereas if he'd done this turn and come over here, he would not pick up very much power at all from the wave. And then he gathers himself, he waits just a second, waits for the wave to build up so he can grab more power from the wave as he goes into his next bottom turn. And again, he's coming up to where there's power being generated by the wave, right? And this is a spectrum, it's not binary. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, there's power being generated across this whole thing, but there's very little here and there's a lot here. Um, so you wanna be close to that power source. And then the other thing to focus on is timing. And so that is you know, when you're turning. And so how do you, how do you get good timing? There are a few heuristics for that. Uh, one thing that I find useful is to look at the bottom of the wave rather than the top of the wave. I think you can learn more about what a wave is going to do from the bottom than from the top. Uh, the top of the wave can dance around, it can do whatever. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that the wave is going to break. Uh, we've all sailed spots, I'm sure, where the waves start to you know, start to go, it looks like they're gonna break, and then they don't, it comes back down. Uh, but the bottom of the wave reveals a lot more. And so uh, just before a wave starts to break, you get the surface tension building, the wave starts to smooth out, the water gets tight and smooth, and it, it goes into a bit of a bowl. And that's where you wanna turn. So you wanna look for a place on the wave that's smooth when you initiate your bottom turn. And there are Two main reasons for that. One is your board will work better where the water is smooth. If you're trying to turn through chop, you're gonna be bouncing, you're gonna be losing speed, you're gonna go off balance. You don't wanna be turning through chop. You wanna find a smooth place to bottom turn. Very, very important. Um, and so that's a function of both placement and timing. Um, but also it's, I, I would argue that it's more about timing because when the wave is, is about to break, when it's, it's generating, starting to really generate a good amount of power, that's when you see the water smooth out. So that's what you wanna look for. All right, so let's go back to these fundamentals. Let's just get an overview here. So the easiest, quickest, best way to improve your windsurfing, your wave sailing, is to go back to the fundamentals. Focus on wave selection, placement, and timing. Um, now we talked about a lot of reasons why that's 
beneficial for you. I'm gonna add another. And this last reason is maybe a little bit more difficult to understand. But by focusing on these things which are outside of your body, you're focusing on the ocean, you're, you're watching the surface, your concentration, your brain is focusing on the surface of the sea, the height of the waves, what's going on and where you are in relation to all of that, which means that it's not stuck in your limbs. A lot of times, especially if you really want to get better, and it's almost the worst the more you want it, then your brain gets stuck in your limbs and you're stiff and you're reacting more slowly and you're kind of forcing things and you're really trying hard to get the technique, uh, which actually makes your muscles and your, your arms and your legs work less efficiently. You don't want your brain to be in your hands or your feet or your knees or whatever it is. You know, you want your, your body to be reacting on its own. Your body knows what to do. And so you have, want to trust, trust your body. And that can be difficult. It can be really difficult to get your brain out of your body. And in other sports, there are different techniques for that. Uh, maybe there are mantras or, or specific things to focus on. But in, in wave sailing, I find it's really good just to focus on these three fundamentals, wave selection, placement, and timing. Uh, because they are so important anyway. Um, and so like all these reasons that we've just been discussing through this whole video about why you should be doing that. But also, it's a technique to get your brain out of your limbs. And so then your body can better react to whatever is happening. Your motion will be more fluid. All good things. All right, that's it for today's lesson. I hope you learned something. I want to hear how it went. Um, do you have any questions about wave selection, placement, or timing, or anything else? Uh, post it in the Facebook group. Again, this is the Facebook group. Do you have photo or video of you wave sailing? As I always say, the best way to get better is to see yourself and then post it in the group so I can give you my coaching. If you like these videos, thank the coaching team. If you want to join the coaching team, the PayPal link is in the Facebook group. Um, so huge shout out to everyone who contributed to creating these videos. Um, and you can join that list as well. The link is in the Facebook group. Um, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. It's Graham Ezzy's Windsurf Coaching Community on Facebook. Everyone is welcome. Make sure you fill out the questions um, when you ask to join the group, otherwise you'll get rejected. And I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Every Sunday, we do a live stream, live coaching, totally free, everything's in the Facebook group. And I look forward to meeting you all then. All right, take care. Post your questions, comments below and in the Facebook group. And have a good week on the water. All right, take care.